Celtics, Tim, what's your biggest concern going into this series? Well, I think it's it's both guys, the two-headed monster, and you've got to find a way to control one of them. And that's what Minnesota's problem was. I mean, Luka and Kyrie, you can't let them both get over 30. You know, you've got to control. Luka's probably going to get his, so you've got to try to find a way to control Kyrie because Luka is going to have those nights where he's just going to go get 35. But, you know, they had two games in the Minnesota series. Luka had 36 and so did Kyrie. And one, another game, they both had 33. So that makes it so much easier. When both of them are on fire like that, that makes it so much easier for those role guys to now step up because you're paying so much attention to those two. Then Lively's going to get his and Gafford's going to get his and Washington. They're all going to contribute enough where you can go. Uh, I think they've got, they've got to, they're going to make them take tough twos. You know, they don't shoot a lot of threes. They only take in the playoffs. They're only taking about 34 a game, which is a low number. The Celtics shoot 40. So make them take the tough twos. Don't put Luca on the line and don't let both of them go off. It's easier said than done, but they're going to have to find a way to contain Kyrie and not let him get those straight line drives to the rim. How would you match up? How would you defend him? Who on who? And how would you play the high screen and roll with Luca when they bring the big guy out? How would you defend all of that? You know, I, I think you got to mix it up. You can't give him one look because he's so Luca's so smart that whatever you do, he's going to take advantage of the opposite. So I would say you, you got to put, put a big body on him. I put Jalen Brown on him for sure. I put Holiday on, on Kyrie and try to give him a little bit more size as well. And, and White can guard him at times. They'll do some switching outside. But what you don't want is you don't want Al Horford chasing Luca around on the perimeter because that's going to, number one, Luca's going to have his way, even though Al's – capable but and it's also going to wear al out because you're going to need him you're going to need him to make some shots you know he showed in the last series he's still capable of making some threes um you're going to have the drop coverage they're so good at the lob you're going to they're going to get some lobs which is okay i think the lobs are better than luca stepping back for threes that's that's easy math you've got to give him some switching you've got to double him once in a while and see who who you leave open out on the perimeter you know they, they're not a great great three-point shooting team i mean they, Luca and Kyrie are going to hurt you, and PJ Washington. But other than that, they're, they're not a guy. That you can help off guys and help off on Kyrie. Now, the other issue, and I heard you guys talking about a little bit, is of the edge. I think the overall edge of the Celtics is really important. You know, I point back to when he was with Brooklyn. You know, he's making straight line dra- drives to the rim like he's driving down the pike with nobody else on it. I mean, you've got to make it difficult for him in the lane. Someone's got to put some resistance, you know, someone's got to slide over and try to block his shot or foul him at times to make it, make him feel uncomfortable because if he feels comfortable, he's pretty much unstoppable. If he thinks he can get to the rim with no resistance, he's going to go. He's going to put his head down and go. Tim, what about the other end of the floor? Lots been made of the Dallas defense. Where are they vulnerable? If at all? Well, I think you got to make Luca work, Tony. Uh, Luca is not a great defender. Everybody knows it. And, He's going to have his work cut out for him in this series because they try to hide him on defense because they, they'll funnel stuff to their big guys because they do have the big guys in the middle with Gafford and Washington and Lively that can make plays at the rim and Luca will maybe extend a little bit. But you've got to put him in situations where he's got to guard, and, and they're going to do that. They're going to attack him. They're going to put him in situations, whether they're in switches or straight down uh, isolation plays on the wing, where he, they're going to make him work. And number one, he's not a good defender. But number two, if you make him work, it's going to maybe take away from the offensive end. Although he, he's so good, he's so smart, he knows how to when to go, when to slow, and how to save himself for the offensive end on the floor. But there's no doubt, since the trade, trade deadline, they are much better defensively. I mean, Lively was, has had a really good rookie year, but the other two guys, Gafford and Washington, have given him extra bodies to throw at you. So they're going to pressure out on the perimeter and take away the Celtics three. So the Celtics are going to have to – Isolation ball is not going to work in the series. They're going to have to move the ball and move the men out on the perimeter a little bit to move those big guys, try to get them outside of the lane. So there was news today. Porzingis is going to be ready to go for game one, Tim. If there's any question or concern about him not being 100%, should they consider keeping Horford in the starting lineup? Uh, yeah, I would. I think you got to just try to try to get him in there, though. If you're going to sit him, sit him after he warms up and, and plays for a little bit. Uh, if he comes in off the bench cold, I think there would be a concern. Maybe he comes in and he is cold and he maybe tweaks the injury again. You know, he's a seasoned veteran, Jim. I, I just think that 
Uh, he knows his body. It sounds like he's still concerned about playing at a high level as far as when the, the lights go on and the scoreboard goes on, even though he has been in scrimmages. I think he's, they're going to they're gonna manage it. They're going to be smart about it. They've been smart about it. I think he probably could have played at the end of the Pacers series. I, that's what I've been told. But they've been very smart about it, and you have to because you've got to kind of ease him back into it. I would throw him out there right away and then see how he looks three or four minutes and then get him out and try to keep him warm on the sidelines. It's Tim Welsh of ESPN, former head coach of Providence College. You know him well around here. Watch him on NBC Sports Boston and other venues. Tim, when you watch Jason Tatum, uh, are you left wanting for more or do you think people are too critical of his game? You know, uh, of course you want more. Uh, any coach, any you know player, any guy, you know, guy that's in the front office you're saying does he have that extra gear when things go tough uh, i saw it a little bit in the indiana series at times uh you want it all the time i think he's been better this year i, I do think he's been better uh you guys have talked about it today i heard you talking about the edge uh that sometimes it's hard to put into people it's hard to put into players he's got the talent He's very good. He understands there's going to be a lot of pressure. I think he's going to play well in the series. I do. I think they're going to have a hard time matching up against him, and he's going to see early and often that he can score in this series, and he's going to go get it. He's got to get it within the, within the scope of the offense. Uh, but I think he's growing. I, I like that he and Brown kind of are a two-man t- uh, tandem right now as far as leaders go, and I think Brown is rubbing off him a little bit. I'd like to see a little bit more, though. Do you worry about the iso ball? A little bit, but I think they've grown out of that, especially with Porzingis uh, back in the lineup. He helps pass the ball. He helps move the ball. I think they've learned over the course of the year that doesn't work. Uh, I've, you saw that in, in game two, after game two, I believe, in the Miami series. Uh, they went back to the film room. You know, Joe Missoula is not going to come out and say this to us, but he's going to go back to the film room. They're going to have some hard talks and hard sessions back there. And, you know, he's got a great coaching staff with him that these guys are going to tell it like it is. And I think they've been consistent with that all season long. You know, they may throw one up one night where they just don't show up on offense and they take bad shots. That's going to happen. But over the course of a seven game series, I don't think that that will rear its ugly head. You mentioned Missoula. I, I know you have a little bit of a history with them down in Providence, right? I forget exactly what the connection is, but I, I, I know you're you know, uh, really familiar with him. What have you seen from him? Do you think he's grown here in the last year or two? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Joe, was, Joe used to come to our camp when he was 12 years old. He grew up about 10 minutes from Providence College campus. A great young guy. His dad was a heck of a high school coach in Rhode Island. Uh, listen, he was thrown into a tough situation a year ago. You know, anytime I, I thought about it myself, if, if I was handed the keys to say when I was an assistant at Syracuse and Jim Beheim stepped away one day from the first ge- first game of the season, uh, here, coach the team now. You, know, you don't get to hire your own assistants, and good luck. Uh, so he did, he did pretty darn good with what he had, was faced with last year. But this year now he's got his own staff. He had a whole year to evaluate. He's got Brad there to help him and talk to him about growing as a coach. You know, Jeff Van Gundy, I'm sure, has talked to him. And and right now he is, I mean, he is coached terrifically in the playoffs. He's been, he's been faced with different situations. That Indiana series, I thought he adjusted well. In-game adjustments, lineup changes. The one game in Indiana where he went small ball and he brought in Brissett. He gave him good minutes. He's had his bench. He's developed a bench all year long. And that hasn't always been the case. You've seen coaches just really try to grind it out and, and not develop bench. You saw it in New York. I mean, New York had no bench at the end of the year with the injuries. Their guys weren't ready to play. But he's had he's developed a bench, you know, with Pritchard and Hauser and even Cornette to a certain degree. Those guys can give you some minutes if needed. And he's used them and he has them ready for the playoffs. And I think, you know, he's been really good with the media this year and he's comfortable in his shoes. And you know, he's, he understands that the, he has the support of the upper management, and that's important as a coach. If you don't feel that support, uh, then you're going to always be doubting and you're going to be on the defensive. But I think the marriage has is, is really worked out this year. All right, Tim, who do you like and why? I like Boston. I, I really do, and, and I know the concerns. I just don't see enough on the other, on the other side. I don't see enough where they can stop. Uh, Boston, you know, Boston, you know, Drew Holiday playing like he did in the Indiana series with Al Horford stepping up. And listen, we know he's not going to make seven threes every night, but he's feeling like he could, he's back playing in a good groove again. I think Brown feels like this is his time. 
And I think Tatum will say, listen, I've got a great support system. I don't have to do everything, but I can still be the leader of the band. And I think that their defense is good enough to slow down Kyrie and Luka to a certain degree, take away their bigs, stretch the floor out a little bit. And offensively, I just think they're just too dangerous. I don't think I can't see a way where Dallas can outscore them every night. Well, let me just oh, so you like the Celtics, but let me ask you this: Doncic or Tatum? Who would you take? Ooh, uh, you know I like I like Tatum only because of the fact that of the size and the athleticism, and he gives you a little bit more on the other end. And he's a heck of a rebounder. I mean, he's just re- been rebounding the ball terrifically. Uh, in this series, you know, can you reach down and find that extra gear? Maybe not, but the talent I think will oversee any of that, overlook loop any of that, that over the long haul. But what listen, I'm, you're you're splitting hairs. And they're both great. But what they're I'm driving at is, five. and I'm sorry, Tim. What I'm driving at is the best player usually wins, right? So is it a problem if Tatum's not the best player? I'll just leave you with that. Uh. Yes, it is a problem in this series for sure. I mean, if Luca's, you know, putting the team on his back like Steph Curry did a couple of years ago, and Tatum is having off nights, then it is going to be a problem. Although they're built differently now, they're totally built differently. They've got more leadership. They, they the, the coach has got the team under his hand. I mean, you got no Marcus Smart. You, You've got no Brogdon, the locker room lawyer. These guys were a detriment a year ago, and I think they're really connected this year. So I think that can overcome if Luka is the best player. But uh, I wouldn't want to see it if I'm Boston. I think he, he could be an issue, but I think Tatum will be able to step to the plate and at least be close to Luka.